If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. I'm Charles Bullock and welcome to Impact Talk. We're going to be discussing on this program a very, very vital subject. It has to do with TV preachers. Now, not all of them, but at least some of them. Today, all across this country and really all around this world, there is being a philosophy, which I personally would call Gnosticism, preached all over this world that uh, is being counterfeited as the real truth. I'll explain to you or we'll discuss maybe a little bit of Gnosticism later in this program in case that's a big word you don't know, but I can assure you that uh, it is true, it's happening. I'm going to be talking to a gentleman on this program that has put together a book as an editor that has really exposed much of the heresy or the heretical teachings that I just spoke about. The name of the book is The Agony of Deceit. It is really a, um, there are several authors that have put together this book or actually written in the book and uh, he's edited it as well as written some chapters in it and I think it'll be a blessing to you. Mr. Michael Horton is with me. Michael, welcome again to Impact. Thanks, Pastor. Good to be here. want to, uh, first of all, for those that may not have heard of your book, and by the way, it's published by Moody Press, um, Tell us a little bit about the book, what it's all about. Well, we thought that one of the things that was being overlooked in the whole uh, Pearly Gate scandal, as the secular press dubbed it, uh, with PTL and, and uh, Oral Roberts and Jimmy Swaggart, was the theology underlying everything. It seems that whenever there's a moral scandal, people all notice and they say something needs to be done. But when the basic doctrinal foundations of the faith are at stake, Nobody seems to worry. Nobody seems to care. Uh, we think doctrine is of ultimate importance. Right. That's what determines really our fate. That's what re determines whether we go to heaven or hell, what we believe about right. Jesus Christ. And, uh, of course, all of us can be guilty of indiscretions. We're all sinners saved by grace. Uh, but to be saved, we have to believe the correct things about Jesus Christ and about what, he's, what He has done in, in right. salvation. And we believe that uh, some of the teachings by some of the leading TV and radio preachers of our time are misleading thousands, multiple thousands, hundreds of thousands into error serious enough to put their soul in jeopardy. And, and people are just sitting if, uh, and I'm sure this is what you're talking about, but you watch television today, and I'm talking about the television ministries, supposedly, thousands of people just sitting in the pew soaking mm -hmm. it up mm -hmm. like a sponge mm -hmm. never questioning mm -hmm. in fact to some extent probably have been intimidated to even think about questioning in other words these men have set themselves up as such high and mighty spiritual giants that you don't question what I say that's exactly part of the problem this is why people are sort of what they're doing is turning their mind off because here's what the, the person tells them, someone like Kenneth Hagin or Kenneth Copeland. Or they, they say, your mind is the source of all your problems, therefore turn your mind off, turn your spirit man on. And how do you turn your spirit man on? Listen to me, because I'm in touch with the great spirit, God. And it is through my contact with Him, it is through my revelations, my revelation knowledge, as they call it, which I receive directly down the pipeline. Uh, that I come to you and give you the truth. So, 
go ahead. Now. Yeah, so, so they, they sit back and, and drink in whatever he says because after all, he got it not, not through, through human learning, but through uh, uh, direct revel revelation from God. I was just going to say that uh, it's not just Michael Horton that's concerned about all this. No. As I look at your, your book here and just on the cover here, uh, R.C. Sproul, mm -hmm. C. Everett Coop, and I know Walter Martin. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about a uh, who's who here. We're talking about a group of who's who that are deeply as concerned about this problem as Michael Horton is. Yeah, who knows who, who, Mike Horton? Who cares what he thinks? But when you get uh, a group of people like this together, it really matters. What it says is people who have studied doctrine, not only in the Bible, which is our, our ultimate uh, source for truth, but have, have studied the way Bible doctrine has been interpreted and misinterpreted by cults for the last 2,000 years, have all agreed that this is a misinterpretation of the Bible so, uh, so bold-faced that it is a cult. And, and all of those who contributed to this volume have agreed that this movement has placed itself, itself outside of Christian, uh, the Christian family. Now, we're talking exclusively about what we could, there are many terms, so I, I, uh, but we're talking about the prosperity gospel. We're talking about this, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, positive confession. Name movement. it, claim it. Name, blab it, grab that's it, right. and all this kind of stuff. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what we're talking about. Right. Things that really cannot stand up to the test of scriptures. No, especially when, when Paul, for instance, says that suffering is not only a part of God's plan, but he says, here's what it produces. And right. all the things that suffering produces, um, Paul says are very good things and necessary things to produce character and, and so forth. So, no, we don't, we don't find prosperity teaching in the Bible. Um, the psalmist asks, why do the wicked prosper? Well, that'd be a good question to ask Paul Crouch or I Kenneth got, I Hagen. Have a, I have a real good one. I, I was reading the book of Acts here a while back, and when Peter and John went to the temple, they said, silver and gold have I none. I thought, they couldn't have made it today. They didn't have any gold to oh, give to the guy. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so, uh, but that, that, uh, that is, that's absolutely true. They yeah. said silver and gold. Jesus' parents mm -hmm. were so poverty-stricken, they could not purchase the, the uh, most important, or not the most important, but the more expensive sacrifice. They had to go with the turtle doves. And that was a, that was a clear indication because they had levels of sacrifices depending on your level of being able to pay for them. And mm. so they purchased uh, turtle doves uh, to make the, when, when they went to the temple there, mm -hmm. and which implied they didn't have a lot of money. Fascinating. I never thought of that. So, so uh, when, you, when, you, when you get down and, and study the scriptures, and, and especially the New Testament, uh, in the New Testament I've always said that the, uh, God talks about spiritual blessings in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, there was tangible material blessings. Mm -hmm. That was the sign of God's blessing. But in the New Testament, Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Yeah. And, and our blessings are uh, very simply uh, uh, the election of mm -hmm. God. Uh, you know, we can talk about redemption. We can talk about forgiveness. I mean, I would rather be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb than have a Rolls Royce. Yeah. The, the interesting thing is, even, you even mentioned a Rolls Royce, Fred Price, who is out there where we are, uh, big Oral Roberts uh, devotee and protege, in fact, uh, Crenshaw Christian Center, he's on TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network. He says that uh, he has a Rolls Royce because he has a Rolls Royce kind of faith. In fact, he has two Rolls Royces. But uh, they... Good, not, I heard him say here a while back that he, last year, year before last, his giving to the church was 300000 I thought, mercy, he must have made $3 million. So. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, they say, uh, all of them, in fact, uh, you turn on TBN any time, John Avanzini, the financial counselor for TBN, who does his financial show all the time, he says that uh, uh, you know that Jesus wasn't poor because he wore designer clothes. Oral Roberts wrote the book, How I Know Jesus Wasn't Poor, said the same thing. Uh, he had a treasurer, and if he had a treasurer, that must have meant that he had had millions of dollars in the bank. The disciples who followed him <laughs> did so uh, dropping everything. They had no visible means of support, so they must have been independently wealthy. Just to, You talk about leaps uh, of faith. <laughs> the faith movement has taken leaps of faith. Now, 
again, we we're we're dealing with the bizarre. Is really what we're dealing. We with. really are. And uh, this is National Enquirer theology. This really is. I have just finished a book that deals with the subject uh, that basically we're, we're dealing with. Uh, it was a book by uh, Chuck Colson, but it Chuck addresses one of the problems in our society is relativism mm -hmm. and individualism. Mm -hmm. That what's in it for me, Dale? Sure. So if that is the current philosophical view today amongst people, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Here comes a man along that says, I'm going to make you healthy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you wealthy. That just appeals to the the condition of our society today. Everybody's mm -hmm. in for what what's in it for me. Well, so so when you come along or I come along, and say that's all wrong. Uh, theology doctrine is what counts. Mm -hmm. You're the bad guy. Absolutely. Because you are uh, you're you're kind of reigning on their party, mm -hmm. or their parade rather, and uh, so. You know, I hear over and over and over again. I was just invited to a to uh, participate with some other churches recently um, that uh, I would think would be of this persuasion that we're talking about today. And uh, they said to me, "We want you to speak, but there won't be any doctrine at all." <laughs> And so I said, well, I said, now, are they, going, are they not going to practice what I, what I asked them? I said, are they not going to practice tongues? Can I be assured they're not going to do that? Because that's not my position. Mm -hmm. and they said, well, we don't have any control. So I said, now, you want me to drop all my toys, but you don't want to drop your <laughs> toys, and tell me that, that this thing is going to be a non-doctrinal thing. And that's what I'm hearing today is it doesn't matter what you believe, mm -hmm. as long as you love Jesus. You know, let's get rid of our doctrine. We don't want to get rid of all of ours, but mm -hmm. we just want to come and love Jesus. And it's just this mentality of out with theology, mm -hmm. in with experience. It's exactly what the cults do. Uh, I had some wonderful Mormon friends who I, I had to tell them, you know, that Mormonism is not a, a, a Christian denomination. That's what they were suggesting. And the average uh, a Pentecostal or follower of the faith teachers would say the same. Yeah, absolutely. A, a Mormon denies the basic things that a Christian holds dear. Well, the faith teacher denies the basic things that a Christian holds deal, de uh, dear. Denies uh, the, the eternal deity of Christ. Mm. Denies the uniqueness of Christ's incarnation. Says that we're all as much the incarnation or the enfleshing of God as Jesus Christ was. Mercy. That Jesus was born again in hell. Uh, I've heard that. Dragged around in the pit of hell, mm. and then uh, after after three days in hell, was born again, and so and Kenneth Copeland says said to God, "Well, you mean I could have done the same thing?" And God said, "Sure, if you would have had the knowledge of the Word of God, He had, because you're a born again man too." This kind of 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 heretical, blasphemous nonsense. No Christian who really does love Jesus Christ. Can can bide. I, it's we've divorced the love of Jesus from Jesus Himself. Let, let, well, that's an excellent point. Let, could this not be? And I'm trying to think like maybe our audience. A slip of the tongue. Could that not be what it is? Are these guys maybe just a slip of the tongue, or or do they really believe this? If the predominance of their material suggested that they believed along with us, the mainstream, main, main important biblical doctrines of Christ, I would say yes. The, the, these would be weird statements that they said just in passing, unguarded statements, but they're not. They are, they are huge doctrines which they develop in entire books and entire tapes. It is the focus of their entire ministry. For instance, Paul Crouch, uh, when approached by Walter Martin and others, said, I am a little God, critics be gone. So they know exactly what it is they are saying. They are as much God as Jesus Christ was. And they're saying it uh, with determination and with resolve. They know exactly what they're saying. Uh, it, it's, it's willful and it's heretical. And they're pr almost pronouncing curses on anybody like yourself that would dare edit or write a book like you have put together. Absolutely. Well, they're, they're praying for our death on television, on the air. Now, that's real Christian. Yeah, see, the, the irony is we've tried to get together with, with all of these groups, 
Uh, they lie about, about uh, attempts not having ever occurred. They lie about letters getting lost. They, 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 uh, nothing can be said less stridently than that. They lied. And uh, yet we're the bad guys. We wanted to settle this behind closed doors and open the scriptures to them and say, look, we're your fellow believers. Let's, let's talk about this. They refused that in their arrogance, set themselves up uh, outside the, the uh, accountability to the larger church body. And uh, that they, they couldn't defend it biblically, so they simply called down curses upon us. Well, I, I would submit that, uh, that really our theology has produced more, more genuine concern for unity in the body of Christ than theirs has. Unity is, is what? Unity about what? Unity about Jesus Christ. What unites me to you and you to me is not that we've had a common experience. It's not that, that I can tell you I, uh, my conversion experience and it sounds just like yours. What unites us together is we believe the same thing about Jesus. Right. You know, Spurgeon made a statement that I use quite often. Uh, he said, to, but to deny truth for the sake of unity mm. is to deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And yet people today forget about what you believe. Mm -hmm. You know, the Proverbs says something, uh, Mike, about uh, this whole subject. The Bible says that in Proverbs that the simple believe everything they hear. Hmm. And, and people today are sitting in the pew and they're not being good Bereans and the book of Acts as you know was there. They're not really searching to see if this thing mm -hmm. uh, because of the infallible inerrant teacher that's standing yes. before them. Yes. And um, um, do you see people beginning to wake up to this problem or or do you see them just turning their back on what you're saying? Or, or are we seeing a turnaround? Well, uh, it's interesting. I'm only one person, but I, I have uh, spoken on a, a lot of, regarding the book, a lot of TV and radio stations have, have spoken to a lot of evangelical groups, uh, have even been able to speak in some charismatic circles. And I really do see both. I see a hardening on one side of people saying, you can't touch the Lord's anointed. And, uh, you know, I, I've said all, all people like that need is a packet of Kool-Aid and a one-way trip to Guyana. I mean, you're, if you're at that point, nothing someone says is going to change your mind. You are, you are neurotically involved with a cult. And this person is going to lead you uh, off, a, off a cliff uh, if you'll let him. But then there are others who are opening up and who are saying, you know, this... I really do have to start thinking for myself here and reading the Bible for myself and not just reading it through their lens, but, but asking the question, is what they're teaching something they, they've made up and have just baptized with a few Bible verses taken out of context, or is this what the Bible's really teaching? And I've never yet known anyone who, is, who has realistically said, I'm going to question everything Ken Copeland or Ken Hagen has taught me over the years and just go to the Bible and learn for myself. I have yet to meet a person who does that, not come away uh, uh, believing that what Hagen and Copeland taught was heresy. There's one book that has not been written yet, and it's the book of the casualties mm -hmm. from these people's uh, ministries. I am sure that there are people all over this world that are former followers that are casualties. Let, let me, one illustration, I had a lady in my church um, that had had 39 operations. Her church, which was of the persuasion that you're talking about, had told her that everything she was experiencing was just symptoms. They were, that wasn't real. Mm. And here she'd had 39 operations. What a lot of these guys are not telling us today, some of the leading, quote, Faith healers and uh, people of this persuasion have had open heart surgery themselves, <laughs> but they're not telling their people this. Mm -hmm. They're not telling everybody uh, a lot of the things. And I'm sure there are people all over this country that are casualties from this kind of uh, this kind of philosophy. And and uh, it's almost like you're not spiritual unless you're driving a, a, a Rolls Royce or mm -hmm. something. 
and and I'm sure there are casualties. I guess the thing that you mentioned a moment ago about uh, the denial of the deity of Christ and all of that. I mean, we're, we're not talking about uh, you know if you and I spent time discussing the Bible, we we may disagree on some incidentals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my father's a pastor, and he and I disagree on incidentals. <laughs> But when we start talking about the fundamentals, we're talking about the deity of Christ. Now, if you and I don't agree on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have nothing in common. That's right. I mean, we, we, if we don't believe in the vicarious suffering mm -hmm. of Jesus and, and, and those, the virgin birth, those are the fundamentals of the faith. Even if we have the same experiences. Yeah. Even if we, even if we both speak in tongues, even if we both uh, were saved in the same church, even if we've both been baptized, even, yeah. But we, we, we've got to deal with the fundamentals. Absolutely. Because they, and, uh, well, they're really the foundation of everything. And, you know, you mentioned earlier in the program about um, some of the, the, the morals and the fallings and all of that. I heard it said several years ago that theology will dictate your morality. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, bad theology. In fact, I think Second Peter in chapter 2 when you look at false prophets, the study of false prophets, adultery and false prophets go hand in glove. And greed. And greed. You're exactly right. They're a greedy lot, Peter says. Hmm. And, and the, the theology produces the morality. Ralph Waldo Emerson, though no Christian theologian by any stretch of the imagination, said, tell me what a man believes and I'll tell you what he'll do. Well, we could have told you what Jim and Tammy Baker would have done uh, so long ago, we were waiting for it because we had been telling, uh, our, our group in Southern California had been telling people uh, about their theology. And uh, we were tr uh, trying to show people that th theology really is important, doctrine really is important. Well, we saw how important it was uh, with the, the crash uh, and the, the, the blemish that that put on the cause of Christ in this country and around the world. Mm. Well, it's a sad day. I, I, I was telling you before the taping of this program about my uh, activity in Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. and one of the pastors last year told me that we took 50,000 New Testaments into their country last year. Great. And, um, but one of the pastors told me, he said, um, we not only need Bibles, but we have got to have doctrinal material. He says because these same people that you're talking about, Michael, mm -hmm. are, are bombarding the Soviet Union mm -hmm. with their same riffraff and mm -hmm. garbage. Mm -hmm. And that pastor said they're dividing our churches. And we're talking about churches, people who have stood together for 60 years under communism mm -hmm. that have held hand in hand and, and, I mean, just been close. And here these people come and overnight dividing their churches. Mm -hmm. And he said, God is angry, mm -hmm. and God is going to shut the doors because of all of this heresy. Well, I was a, a year and a half ago, I was in Nicaragua. And as you know, similar experiences. Uh, the believers there have had to endure the trials of communism and dictatorship and, and abject poverty. And uh, they may not have homes, but they, they have television sets, little television sets hooked up with wires, with, with uh, hangers and the whole bit, uh, makeshift TV sets to get uh, TBN and to get Copeland and Hagen and, and uh, the whole bunch. And uh, I, was, I was down there at the invitation of uh, the Alberto Motesi Evangelistic Association as well as uh, the National Council of Evangelical Pastors. And that pastor told me that Copeland and Hagen and Polk and, and the, the TBN family uh, is really uh, the largest group of Christians down there. And that uh, Swaggart was the virtual pope of Central and South America. Well, when I began to read these quotes to him, he, his own library was filled with Hagen and Copeland and Kenyon. Uh, when I, I began to read these quotes to him, his countenance changed entirely. Hmm. He was opposed to the idea of even bringing it up. And then as I read the quotes, he, he, he yelled out in Spanish, this is heresy. This is blasphemy. And he went out and he cleared out all of, all of the books out of his library. And I wish that more I, it, pastors in America, uh, individuals, uh, uh, 
uh, individual Christians in America and around the world in the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc, wherever this trash is distributed, get rid of it. Just just get rid of it. It's it's of no value whatsoever. You know the thing. We're out of time, but and I wish we could have developed this more. But we're not dealing with anything new. I mean, you go back and study church history uh, in the second century. There, I think it was uh, Montanus, mm -hmm. uh, the same old stuff. Gnosticism. Yes. I've been doing some reading and studying on Gnosticism of late, and it's just an ancient, uh, well, ancient. It's just a, it's just uh, mysticism is all mm -hmm. it is, and all we're seeing today is mysticism. Our mystic experience mm -hmm. becomes the authority, mm -hmm. not the Word of God. And uh, I would challenge our listeners to uh, familiarize themselves with with Gnosticism. We call it today the New Age movement. But it really is just Gnosticism at all, all it is all it is, and, and it's invaded the church. And uh, I want to say to those listening as we go off uh, the air that uh, you need to get this book. I can say to you that I have read it. I recommend it to you. The name of the book is The Agony of Deceit. It's published by Moody Press. You can pick it up at a local bookstore, or you could write us. We'd be happy to tell you how you can get it by just writing us. The address will be appearing at the end of this program. But I want to thank Michael Horton for being with us thank you, on Pastor. this program. And uh, we hope that something we have said will open your eyes. We encourage you just to take the Bible, take their teachings, and, and examine them. We're priests before the Lord, and we have every right to examine whatever we hear. And so I encourage you to do that. And so until next time, thank you so much for viewing this program. God bless you. I'm Charles Bullock. Check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. 